Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Wednesday, which means it's time for another installment of Fatal Vision. How you doing? Today we're going to be taking a look at Hellsign by Ballistic Interactive. And previously I had done a video on this and I really wasn't happy with the way that it came out. Because honestly, I didn't really explain a whole lot about how the game operates. And they recently came out with an all new update that changes a lot of stuff around and I think it deserves another look at. So yeah, let's play some damn games. Alright, so basically what we got here is essentially a bare-bones character creator here, and got a bunch of different classes, which basically determines the loadout that you're going to be going in with. Some of them are more based off of investigative skills, others are going to be based more off combat. I'll just jump in with the mercenary there. And picture-wise, we got Cobra, Crocodile Dundee, and Samuel L. Jackson, Snake Plissken's high school yearbook photo, and... The guy from Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, we'll just go with Cobra. And I really don't think we need a mature language filter for this shit. Really digging the art style here. It kind of reminds me of early 90s Marvel comics, like when Todd McFarlane was doing it. Kind of getting Constantine vibes here, and you know what, I think that's a really good way to describe this game in general. It's kind of like Fallout because of an isometric perspective meets Constantine. And that's really what I love most about this game in general, it's just the fact that if you're like, say, a Phasmophobia fan, because that's ultra popular, Hellsign is really more combat oriented, but it still has those investigative aspects of it. And this predates Phasmophobia by a year, but as time has gone by, the developers have been slowly but surely updating it and adding a lot of new stuff to it. I mean, the investigative stuff, once again, if you're a Phasmophobia person, because that's the best point of reference that I can give you, you still use all the tools of the trade, but you also come in armed with traps and guns to take them out, along with specialized ammunition and armor and stuff like that. So once again, we got the isometric viewpoint here, and I'm loving the fact that there's a dedicated tutorial behind this, because it'll actually explain the game way better than I ever could. Oh, now I get it. And it looks like the heads-up display has been changed up too, and it looks much nicer. I can already tell that I'm seeing that it tells you how many signs you have left to get without looking through the journal. Yeah, sure. You ripper. As far as I remember, that means you're, like, a badass. Yeah, sure. We'll skip all that. You're typing, it's like you're playing Resident Evil again. Alright, so... Uh, this is very nice. I don't remember any type of a tutorial like this, because before, it just kind of threw you in. It was all sink or swim. So... Definitely an improvement there. Play using the keyboard and the mouse to look around, which I don't really mind it, but the perspective, it kind of works best with turn-based action. This is really on the fly and live. Alright. So anyways, this is the Mabel. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. Yeah, it tells you everything you gotta do. So the EMF reader, you just wander around like this until it gets loud. And shit, that's loud. So you gotta have headphones on so that you can actually hear the tools going off. And then we have a cute little black light here. And we use that to look for blood trails and we just follow that. And... what do we got here? Hmm. Yeah, so the... Well, I don't even know why I bothered fucking around with the black light then. We got two out of the three. And while all this is going on, a ghost can pop out and attack you at any time. 
But that's what sets this game apart from pretty much any other game in its category, is just the fact that you can fight back. And like I said, I'd rather kind of go with like a turn-based aspect for the combat because this is your perspective the entire time and things can really start to get obstructive though just from the view. I like it, but you kind of have to get over it at the same time. Let's just check the body itself. There we go. Alright, so once we've gotten all the clues... I'm going to run outside because I hate when stuff happens in the house because it'll yank you outside of the book while you're doing it. Alright. And then you just open up your little journal there, and it even tells you. You take the clues, you throw them down like this. First stage, you can unleash the poltergeist and fight it, but those are really tough fights. And then specific clues, you have to look at some of the variables there. So we got to go in the blood category and match it up to the picture. This is... Well, it looks like blunt force trauma to me. And it's a banshee. Those are really nasty. And that's really all there is to it, and that's on the lower tier level jobs, because I remember there being three different kinds of jobs. You had standard forensics jobs, where you just go in, find the signs, get the hell out. Then you have sweeping missions, where you go through and you just kill everything in sight. You have scouting missions kind of like this, where it's a combination of the two. And then you have full-on haunts. They all have varying levels of difficulty to them, and obviously, the more difficult it is, the more you get paid. You also get way more experience that way, too. And in between missions, you can head out to the bar, where... I know I'm just jumping through this right now, but it's really just stuff that pushes the story along. Which, I remember it not being finished, but it's pretty decent. It's enough to get you into it. Like I said, it's kind of Constantine-ish. I'm assuming that it's just one of those things where, like, in the entire world, it's like... Ghostbusters, you know? Like how they originally envisioned it, where the world was taken over by them, and these guys are like the cops and the fire department. You know, it's like a public service thing. That's all new dialogue, kind of helps flesh out the characters a bit better, so they're getting there in that aspect. So all the signs that you can collect, you sell them to this jack-off. And if you want to kill some time, you can also go gamble. Which, it's kind of 50-50. It's not something you want to do in the beginning. Fuck. Ah, there goes all my money. So that's how fast it happens. So it's something you want to do when you actually have money to do it with. And other than the bar, you can head off to your safe house where you can craft stuff. If you have the schematics, you got a skill table so you can upgrade yourself that way. Look at all the items that you have without going on a mission. go through this book, it does give you some pretty detailed stuff. Now the whole reason why you're looking for these signs when you're going on the actual hunts themselves is once you deduce the identity, you can go a step further after you've progressed in the game and start finding out its weaknesses. So that way you can determine like what it's allergic to, so, like special bullet wise. Like these banshees here, I know they're allergic to silver bullets. And you can also set down EMP, wear sonic ear protection, so that their effects don't hit you as much. And it even goes a step further, so when you drop down traps, you can jury-rig the house so that it puts out a certain wattage of electricity. It's really interesting. I like it a lot. It also kind of changes things up a bit, so it's not just the same old cookie-cutter thing over and over again. You know, copy and paste, copy and paste, because eventually that would get a bit boring. And this is one of my favorite tracks, because it reminds me of KMFDM. That's another thing I should point out is, is that the music in this game is really, really kick-ass. Whoever did the music for this, top-notch job. <laughs> yeah, so how's everybody's week been? I'm sorry I didn't see you Friday, but I'm not going to compete with the election. We saw how that went last week, and it didn't do too well. Imagine how Friday would have been. Yeah, I know. Puzzle box, Hellraiser. Yeah. Music is wow. 
I mean, it's nice and heavy hitting in the bar, which is really appropriate. And then when you get out in the field, you have that beautiful atmospheric music that always keeps you on edge. And then when you actually summon the ghost and get into a fight with them, it's like something that Hans Zimmer would have done. It's really, a, like, epic shit. Yeah, so we'll just talk to this guy. And see, there's a good example. You go to the gun shot, you can, uh, shot. You go to the gun shop and you can upgrade your equipment there. There's our little puzzle box that we need there. You have a decent variety, I want to say, of armor and equipment here. And plus it all pays in with the whole light, heavy armor stuff. If you have heavy armor, you have moving penalties. And everything has a different effect. These are all new. Actually, I have a headlamp here. Nice. Yeah, so we got a couple new things here, which I'm digging. Same deal with boots and shoes and stuff like that. Accessories, which adds little stat things here. You get the drill of this, so it's it's pretty neat. You actually get to forge out your own play style, so I can dig it. And let's just jump into a couple hunts. And that really, the reputation thing, the only thing I noticed that changes up on is just how much money you can bet when you're sitting at the blackjack table. Now the blackjack table, it's kind of fair. But once again, it's not something you want to do if you can't afford to lose the money. But the tutorial thing, I'm definitely digging where it just tells you what to do, what everything is supposed to do. Now the story ended, I'm not going to spoil it at all. But it just kind of ended abruptly because I'm assuming they haven't finished it yet. But what they've got so far, it's not run-of-the-mill, but it kind of is at the same time. It's, like I said, it's kind of like Constantine, but you have this tattoo on your back, which somehow connects you to the demon realm, and you got to figure it all out. And it's kind of predictable where things are going to go, but if they go with that whole comic book route when they're explaining things, I like it a lot. Now, the big thing that I want to see the change in the most is the combat, because the combat, uh, it was a pain in the ass, because once again, it wasn't turn-based, it was all real-time. Now, originally, something I read that they changed here was, is that you used to be able to change your firing mode, where it was more of a broad area, or you could do precision. So you would do the precision to shoot out locks on doors, but this looks like it's only one way, which makes it a lot better. The only pisser to the whole thing is, is um, no joypad support. So if they narrowed it down to one firing style, you kind of should have joypad support. It's just moving the, ra the mouse around like this. Especially when things get really, really tense. Oh, wait a minute. So it doesn't let you do this stuff until it's, you've shown the game, I know what I'm doing. All right. But I want to see how well the combat works now, because it was just really, really unforgiving before. I mean, you could fire at enemies all day long and they would kick your ass, and you just keep missing. It was really, really hard to do it, and they would just pack on the damage. Well, that's way better. able to move around a lot better. Everything's a lot more responsive this time, so... Good on this. Yeah, that's one of the little glitches that the poltergeist does on you right there. Now, as far as enemy variety goes, I'd actually say there's a pretty decent variety of them. You don't just fight spiders. There's spiders, you've got giant millipedes, you've got these ghouls that jump at you. They're like turd men on steroids, basically. I don't think we're going to be fighting them this time. Yeah, damage has been upped. Well, I wonder if there is. Alright. Analyze a corpse. Alright, this is all new, but I actually kind of like this. So you sacrifice your battery to get more information on them. We'll go with the middle of the road thing. Yeah, this is new. I like this a lot. 
definitely running a lot better. Oh, we've got albino spiders. Alright, so let's see what we got here. Nice! Meat baits and incendiary rounds. Oh, that's a hit and a half for me. Ignited petrol traps, too. Alright. I want to see how this works. Yeah, this is where it gets good. Wow! I like it. Yeah, so naturally you're going to start off with more of the weaker stuff. Oh, it's so much easier now. So much easier now. Like, you have no idea how hard it was originally. Like, even after you've upgraded stuff. Alright. I have a feeling. This is cool. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get into the whole aspect of, like, there's a new way to do it, because I'm so used to doing it the old-fashioned way. But that's where the game would really get you, though, is you go in every single room, and the maps are all pretty much all the same. Like, you got one layout, you got another layout, but the cool thing was is that if I go into this room another time, something could pop out at me. So you're always on edge. And to me, I think that's a really important thing when you do horror games, is you got to have that atmosphere. And this is where the game really, really shines, is that atmosphere itself just kicks ass. The fuck is this thing? This thing just does not want to come out. I'm trying to clear the house of all threats, but they don't want to come out. They figured out that now I know what I'm doing. Now the only thing that used to really get me about this game though was just that it could get really grindy in a sense. Well, it's only slow now, slow now because I'm not skilled in it. Once you get skilled in it, like the reload times decrease, the damage output increases. It's a cool part about that skill tree thing going on there. Like, where the hell is this fucking thing? But yeah, it used to get really grindy in the sense just that... <sighs> You would get stuck in these mid-level hunts just trying to get money because you didn't really get paid much in the early ones and doing the heavy ones... Oh boy. Shadow Beast Realm. I'm supposed to die here. It's all part of the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see? Shadow Beasts are nasty boogers. But yeah, going into the higher level hunts where you get the actual money with low level equipment just does not balance out really well. So even doing like the middle of the road stuff, so you're just constantly doing those scouting missions or those forensic missions, or maybe trying to edge out some bucks with the, with the gambling, and more time than not, you wind up losing the money and then you have to go back and do another mission again. So that's the part where the grinding happens, where it's just like, ugh. Yeah, I mean, like, those things, you'd want to use UV lights. On, uh, not UV lights, but UV rounds on them. I think you use UV lights on the a particular poltergeist, and I don't know if that only works on them, but anything light against darkness is... 
Bugs are allergic to fire, because fire kills everything, and most of the other stuff is allergic to silver nitrate rounds. That bastard. Yeah, why not? And I mean, yeah, that's L sign. And we're gonna take a quick break, and then when we come back, we'll jump back in. We've got more advanced equipment, we'll show it off. We'll go on an actual hunt itself just to show that because it's really, really cool once you get into it. So stay tuned, we'll be back in 30. Super fashionable t shirts, collectible buttons for accessorizing, incredibly niche posters for the basement or whatever. All this, and more coming soon, from the Adventuria Item Shop. Alright, and we're back, and I figured that this way we could skip all the grindy stuff and just get right to where all the good shit's happening. Let's see if we can find... there we go. A haunting in a house. A lot of good money here, a lot of signal disruption, risk is just totally through the roof. There's also a new level here where you can go through forests and camping grounds. I'd rather go with what's familiar to me, let something be a little bit of a surprise for you. And we just gotta let it load up. But I'll show off all the cool equipment that we have, we can see some of the higher level monsters and just the way that things operate. Because if we're going through a forensic mission, we're not going to see a whole hell of a lot of activity. Which is what I'm sure you all came to see. So we'll just get something crazy happening, and I'll talk about all the equipment. I've stocked up on equipment, as you can see. <laughs> got this, got that. Let's see, we go one with this. Got a good amount of accessories and equipment going on here. Take one of these. Take one of that, and yeah, why not? You can always go for better accuracy with a shotgun at point blank range. All right, so let's do it. One of the new pieces of equipment here, didn't really talk about this much, was a headlamp attached to a helmet, so you get some added protection, and plus you get a better field of view with the flashlight, which I like. Jesus. Yeah, this shotgun don't play. So yeah, that's your ghouls for you. Like I said, they're like turd men on steroids. But I'd have to say, this is a pretty good contrast to most haunted house games. Because, I mean, you kind of run the risk of ruining the scare if you can actually fight back. But I think this balances it out really, really well. Because what's the big thing about a haunted house is that you're going up against something that you can't fight back against. And you know what? I should really be a little smarter about this. I mean, most monsters can't handle silver nitrate. But I think... Jesus, stay the tentacle much? Yeah, I like the shotgun. I mean, typically I use a submachine gun. But it just doesn't do as much damage compared to this. But the downside is is that the reload speed is pretty low, and you don't have a very big clip. The map is a new addition, which I like a lot. I have some sort of a clue as to where you've been and what you've got. Because, I mean, that was really probably the biggest downer about how it was originally was, is that you didn't know how far you were getting. You didn't know where you were. It's just lack of information, which... They seem to have fixed, and I'm really glad to see that. Right, we'll swap these out, and we'll go on with the thermal. Now, the thermal has two modes. It used to be a box would float around the screen, and you would just look for a heat signature, and you would take a picture of it, and that would count as your evidence. But this has a new layout, and I think it works. We just want to look for heat signatures. It also has a secondary mode, which will measure condensation. So, in this little red area, there's a hint. And he's getting active. There it is. Yep, 
see? Now the level's gone down, which means we've gotten all the signs. So the tools are really, really helpful. Now the microphone, on the other hand, if you're standing on these tentacles, we probably won't hear anything here. I haven't heard one in the higher level areas. But if you pick up, like, screaming or laughter or something, you can examine it, and that would count as an audio clue. Now, it's not broken down into a thing where you have to find, like... Calm down. It's not broken down into one of those things, though, where you have to find, like, two of these and three of those. A clue is a clue, which kind of cuts out on all the bullshit. You can also scan these ghost orbs to try to do that whole cryptid information thing, which, honestly, I'm so used to doing it the old way that I just really forget to analyze corpses. I'm waiting for this thing to go active. We're going over the tentacles here. Shit! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Go, 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 go! Bam! You have no idea how many times I've gotten caught up on furniture getting chased like that. Alright, we got nothing in here. Definitely in this hallway. Yeah, there's something there. You get used to it. I mean, it's a little loud if you're using earphones. Alright, there's something in these ten tentacles. They call it tendrils, I call them tentacles. Speaking of, Day of the Tentacle. Nice sequel. The Maniac Mansion. I'm still waiting on those remakes to come out. I haven't heard anything for in a while. Yep, there we go. But I gotta say, they do a really good job of keeping things interesting. A game like this could get old really quick, especially with the grinding that I mentioned. But the action's pretty kick-ass. And there should be a hint here. Come on. It's showing. Oh, now it's gone. You know, and as you're going throughout this thing, the ghost will do everything possible just to f totally dick with you and screw you over. Something else you gotta watch out for here is mimics. D&D &D fans will know what I'm talking about there. But it's not a treasure chest, it's the door itself. Like, it's really freaky when you walk up thinking, I'm about to bust this place up, and then suddenly... I think there's something in that painting. There's nothing there. When it happens, you'll know. But, um... <laughs> you think you're about to go in there and kick some ass, and then suddenly teeth sprout out and grab you and chew you up a bit and spit you out. Always takes you by surprise. Give me something good. Oh, shit! And that's how it happens. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Alright, what do we got here? I'm not going to sit by and take that sort of bullshit. But see, that's where... A perfect example of why turn-based can be kind of superior in a situation like this. Because when you take this perspective and make it all live like that, especially when you have all this shit going on... Just Jesus. Wind up dying and you got to start all the way over from the beginning. At the very least, though, when you die, you get to keep all the signs that you collected so you can kind of get something back in the cash department. And you know what? I'm thinking what might be prudent here. So if I was using incendiary rounds on those little buggers, they would have been toast, and I wouldn't have had to run back and get chewed up by a fucking door. But I really got to stick to this pattern, too. Examine the corpses, find the locations. So at the very least, it'll show you, hey, something's right here. 
Alright, see, there's two ghouls. So we swap out to silver nitrate rounds. Fucker. Fell on his stupid head, too. You can swap it out and just plan accordingly. No, what the hell? I thought I loaded up the incendiary rounds. Ugh. See, that's something they gotta fix, too, is the ammo swapping. That, to me, it gets a little imbalanced. Uh, but we want the silver nitrate, right? Eh, whatever. I can handle those. But that occupies your extra equipment slot, so if I press the button, like so, it should swap out for the ammo that's in that slot instead of having to open up the inventory. Because when you're in a fight, you cannot open your inventory. So that can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Oh, shh. I hate those things. They suck up so much health. They're just tendrils, like tendrils, tentacles, tentacles that come out of your fucking wall. I call them tentacles, but I see tendrils so much now. I'm calling them tendrils. What I really, really hate is when you're doing a poltergeist activity. See, from this perspective and with the live stuff, it becomes manageable and you can get over it. But when you have really heavy-duty shit going on, the screen starts shaking, like it's having an epileptic fit, and then. You just can't stay on top of things. It's really, really disorientating, and that just pisses me off. Because it causes you to die. It's one thing if it's just something spooky happening and there's no real consequence to it, but when it comes to, you know, whether or not you're going to die and you have to start this shit all the way over from the beginning again, that I don't like. I mean, the game is challenging enough on its own, and it's a tough but fair challenge. Alright, so we got a shadow. And it's so bad that you can't even see it. So let's see, disrupting light sources. So we want to use infrared goggles. I love that you can highlight this stuff and go back later. That's cute. Uh, it's a shadow base, so the only way to hit it is ultraviolet rounds, which we have plenty of. All right, and then we can use UV light projectors. Which is cool. And then connect the first thing, which is... Uh, Boss, hard and defensive cost to reduce speed, great opportunity to finesse telescopic sights. A tackle box with lead doors and it can increase the duration. I don't know what the hell that means. And then boot chains. Uh, I guess that's for when I'm configuring it. We'll take a look at the jury rigging aspect in just a second. Magnetic types are highly dangerous. Run your projector on motor oil. And hunters can use compensator barrels. And then a charm. Alright. Let's stock up. Alright, the other thing I gotta be prepared for is... I'm all prepared. I've got everything that I could possibly need. Alright, we got the combat boots on, got a ballistic vest, don't have to worry about it. I could have swore I, I, I put on glasses, and then it took them off. What the hell is that shit all about? This thing just rejects stuff, and it doesn't tell you. So we're all loaded. Alright, you son of a bitch. I'm gonna take you out today. You ready?
Come on, motherfucker. Come get it. Wow! No pressure. I had to have a Jaws moment, especially with the type of music playing. <laughs> yeah, so... All in all, good hunt. But see, it just really picks up, and it really drags you in, and son of a bitch, I'm glad that I got a chance to share that with everybody, my first shadow kill. Miserable bastard he was. Piece of shit. Yeah, there we go. Bam. Alright, that was uh, Hell Sign, and honestly, I'm really impressed with the uh, changes that they've made so far. The game is a lot easier to play. It's still challenging, but it's still fair. So, I mean, the pluses beyond this one is the atmosphere has knocked it out of the park. I've mentioned several times already that the most important thing about a horror game is atmosphere. And it doesn't get any better than this. I mean, really. Really, really well done. The music here adds to that atmosphere. You got that epic music, you got the hard rock, everything. Music and sound effects are top notch. All perfect there. Lots of the action is really good. I think this is a nice alternative to people who want something tough and something intense in the supernatural realm. So, really, just everything about this is just great. I love it. Uh, negatives that I would have to say about it, though, is that the game can get really grindy in a lot of spots. I've mentioned this already, where sometimes you're just stuck in those middle-of-the-road levels where you're trying to get money and trying to get money, but you can't really do it. Then you go to the harder ones without the proper equipment, you wind up dying, and then you're just back off to square one again. So that, I'd say, is a negative. We saw the screen-shaky bullshit. That's something I just do not like from that sort of a perspective in live action because it doesn't add to anything except just to make the game way harder or more disorientating. But other than that, that's really about it because this is just a great game. And I feel that if like Phasmophobia is like the king of multiplayer haunting games, this is the fucking ruler of the single player universe. It's just great. I'm glad that I got a chance to take a look at this again and talk about it properly. And if anybody was turned off by the original review or hasn't heard of this yet, I hope I convinced you to check this out because slowly but surely, the game is getting better and better. It's just awesome. I love this game. Can't wait to go back to it. And on that note, that's just about going to do it for me. So as always, thank you guys so much for dropping by and inviting me in your day like this. I appreciate you. Hope you guys are having a good week so far. And I'll check in on you Friday with another ROM hack review. And I promise you I'll actually do one. I told you I didn't want to fight with the election for numbers. Um, so yeah, and if I don't see you Friday, try to see if I can get some live streaming going. We can finally finish up Final Fantasy this weekend. Hopefully if that happens, or I'll see you next Wednesday. So until next time, I'll be saying bye-bye now.